Not long after winning the 2002 U.S. Championship, I was approached by the good people at Ubisoft to try my luck against their famous chess program, Chess Master 9000. I have a healthy respect playing against computers, and I knew that Chess Master 9000 would be a very worthy opponent. After some discussion with the Chess Master 9000 team, it was decided to play the match online at the internetchessclub.com. The time control would be brisk but manageable. I was not likely to face severe panic-inducing time scrambles that inevitably lead to gross errors. A large crowd of online kibitzers and spectators were drawn to the bout. I was probably a slight favorite going into the match, but with humans there is the, uh, well, human factor. Just one stupid little move could cost me the game and match. Fatigue, eye strain, psychology, etc. I'll play a prominent role in human chess, and I had to steel myself to try and play like a machine. I went into the match with guarded optimism. Playing against a program like Chess Master 9000 is not a walk in the park. 9K is absolutely merciless punishing errors, is annoyingly patient, and has a perfect memory for openings and endgames. Computers almost never blunder tactically, although they can make major strategic errors. It was this strategic deficiency that I wanted to exploit versus 9K. I hope to steer our battles to quiet maneuvering trench warfare that requires judgment and foresight rather than brute calculating ability. E4 C6 this defense, prepared beforehand, is known as the Karo Khan defense, a very solid system that has a reputation for being effective against attacking maniacs and computers. D4 D5 E takes D5 A very wise choice by Chess Master 9000. This move tends to open the game up and creates more tactical possibilities than lines like 3 knight c3. C takes d5. C4. Knight f6. Knight c3. E6. Knight f3. Bishop e7. A slightly more adventurous move is 6, bishop to b4, but I decided to stay within myself and keep things calm and conservative. C takes d5. Knight takes d5. Bishop e5, check. I was happy to see this move, even though I had never encountered it before in a serious game. The alternative developing moves, 8, bishop to d3, and 8, bishop to c4, pose more problems for black. The problem with 8, bishop to b5 check is that it leads to early simplification. White, with his superior control of territory, should avoid exchanges. That's chess 101. Black, with the slightly more cramped position, benefits from them. Knight c6. I thought about playing 8 bishop d7 here, but I was a little nervous about white playing 9 bishop takes d7 check, queen takes d7, 10, knight e5. But really that line's nothing for white. Black simply answers knight takes c3, 11 b takes c3, queen d5 with a good game. Knight e5. There is a basic principle in the opening that a player should not move the same piece twice unless he has a very good reason. Chess master's move does come with a simple threat, 10, knight takes c6, but that can be easily parried. There is no long-term positive benefit that results from this violation of principle. So, 9, knight e5 must be classified as a mistake. Bishop d7. Bishop takes c6. Bishop takes c6. Knight takes c6. B takes c6. Knight takes d5. C takes d5. This is a very agreeable move from Black's point of view. 
Black's pawn structure has been strengthened markedly. Where once he had two weak queenside pawns, now he has only one. Further, Black's control of the center has been increased. Squares like e4 and c4 have come under Black's possession. I was feeling confident now that I could squeeze a win out of this position, no matter how strong or resourceful my opponent might be. Castle kingside. Castle kingside. Bishop f4. Queen b6. Black is clearly better now for the following reasons. First, his pawn structure is ironclad. White cannot dent that compact chain of pawns. Second, black can attack two weaknesses on white's side of the board. The d4 pawn is isolated and weak, and white's queenside survivors are also vulnerable. Black's plan is to use his A pawn as a battering ram to soften up the white queen side and create a new weakness. Generally speaking, one can usually defend with only one weakness. However, two weaknesses in a position are usually fatal. Queen D2. Bishop F6. Bishop E3. A5. Black plays according to plan. The A-pawn will advance to inflict yet another weak isolated pawn on White's queen side. Rook A, C1. Queen B4. 18 queen takes B4, A takes B4 suddenly opens up the A-file to Black's benefit. White is unable to shake off the pressure now because his pawns are just too weak. Rook F D1. Rook F B8. Rook C3. Chess Master has set a trap that might have worked against a less experienced opponent. If Black mindlessly grabs a pawn with 19, Queen captures B2. White wins with 20, Rook to C8 check. Rook captures C8. 20, Queen takes B2. A strong program like Chess Master never blunders a pawn for nothing. Queen A4 Here I decided to give a little tickle to the A-pawn with the intent of provoking the answer 20 B3. Rook D C1 H6 it is very important for black to remove the threat of back rank mate. This eliminates the constant worry about sudden cheap tricks. Speaking of cheap tricks, black must resist. Queen takes a2, rook a3 attacking the queen. Queen takes b2, only move. Rook c8 check, uh-oh. Rook takes c8, queen takes b2, and white wins. B3. White should have avoided this move until absolutely forced. A better continuation was to improve his king position, starting with g3, followed by king to g2. Queen b4. Black is finally in position to play the long desired a4 to create a lasting weakness on white's queen side. Rook 1, C2. Rook E8. A terrible blunder would be A4, Rook C8 check, King H7, Queen captures B4, Rook captures B4, Rook captures A8, and White wins. h3, a4, rook c8. I can safely say that after this move, white is lost, as the coming endgame is hopeless. White should have tried the active defense, bishop takes h6, queen takes d4, rook d3, queen e4. 
Black has an edge, but white may gain some counterplay later on because of the noticeable weakening of black's king position. Queen takes d2. Rook takes e8 check. Rook takes e8. Rook takes d2. A takes b3. A takes b3. Rook b8. Rook b2. Rook b4. White's defenses are overstretched. He cannot defend both the b-pawn and the d-pawn. King f1. King f8. King e2. Bishop takes d4. Bishop takes d4. Rook takes d4. b4. White's last hope rests with his passed b-pawn, but Black's king easily intercepts it. King e7. B5. Rook C4. B6. Rook C8. Now White's proud B pawn has become a target. Black will soon devour the pawn and then turn his attention to mobilizing his large kingside majority. H4. King D6. Rook B3. Rook B8. Rook g3, g6, h5. Chess master makes a final bid for counterplay. He hopes to either splinter my kingside pawns or create a target for attack. I decided to give back the relatively unimportant h-pawn and begin the decisive advance of my chain gang of pawns. g5. Rook a3. Rook takes b6. Rook a7. Rook b2. Check. King f1. f5. Rook h7. White reduces the material deficit to just one pawn, but the time required to take the h-pawn allows black to roll his pawns forward. d4. Rook takes h6. d3. King e1. King e5. Rook h8. Rook b1 check. King d2. Rook f1. f3. Rook f2 check. King takes d3. Rook takes g2. h6. Rook h2. The past h-pawn has been rendered harmless, and black can advance his surviving pawns up the board. King e3. f4 check. King d3. Rook f2. Rook g8. Rook takes f3 check. King c4. Rook h3. Rook takes g5 check. King e4. Rook g1. Rook takes h6. Wow, a good way to start the match. I won the first game, but I had some help from my opponent. Chessmaster 9000 started with an anemic opening, and it went downhill from there. The game was strategically won after about 20 moves and I only had to avoid some obvious traps to win the game. My opening choice proved very fortuitous, as I soon reached the type of position that computer programs detest. My thoughts now turn to game two. Could I win the next game and effectively settle the match? I had a nice conservative anti-computer opening in mind, and was optimistic going into battle. 